What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with this month's episode of Headphones Neil News. So let's jump right into what I have for January 2021. So for this week, I'm going to start off with a featured topic before we get into the Android, Linux, and Star Wars news, just because it's an important story that's been making the rounds. Um, there's been a lot of um, back and forth as far as um whatsapp signal and telegram um the benefits the pros the cons um the mixed messaging from facebook and all of that so i wanted to give my two cents on um using the platforms and just my take on the platforms that i prefer so as far as the whatsapp news before a bit of backstory um earlier this month facebook announced some changes to the privacy policy regarding what they say was for business users that um, IP address, certain location, chat history, conversation history, and stuff like that would be shared back and forth with Facebook. But in the messaging, or that messaging got mixed in with that it would be used towards um, personal accounts as well and not just business accounts. So a lot of people got very concerned about the implications of Facebook sharing um, personal and private conversations through to the Facebook servers to um, improve the service. So two apps came to note of good alternatives to WhatsApp, notably Signal and Telegram, because they're notably not owned by Facebook and they're very uh, privacy focused. Um, as far as using the apps, I have no preference on either one. I have on a personal note, I or as far as recommending either one, I don't have a recommendation to give you, but on a personal note, I am leaning more towards Telegram as far as the functionality and usability. It does seem a little bit better than Signal, but I can see how Signal can be seen as better than Telegram. So either they're both good, but Telegram has higher limits on chats and uh, file sizes and things like that. But Signal has a little bit better encryption from what I've read online. So but then they both have good encryption regardless so it's kind of hit or miss as far as what you prefer so it kind of comes down to if you're switching from whatsapp it's a matter of who you want to who's going to use which app more or which app is going to be used more um so what facebook has done in regarding all of this um, backlash is that they're extending the change over to their new terms of service to uh, I want to say May or June of 2021, mostly because they say that, or because if you do not agree to the terms of service, then you're not going to, going to be allowed to use WhatsApp, especially if you don't want them to share your content with uh, Facebook proper. So even though WhatsApp has been a face, uh, Facebook app, the general idea has been that they would not do that sharing um, with the Facebook servers. So on a personal note, I ideally don't like that it's happening or that it would happen where they would share the um, conversation history, IP address, location information, and things like that. But so to that extent, I am considering a switch over to Telegram, but my major issue is all the people that I know, especially internationally, use WhatsApp. So getting them to switch from WhatsApp to another service is going to be difficult. And then there's no easy way that I can tell where you can actually um, make that switch over to or tra transfer your chats from WhatsApp over to Signal or Telegram or any other chat service for that matter. So keeping that history is kind of difficult and you would still need to keep the app installed if you do make a hard cutoff and you want to say okay as of for example february 1st i'm going to start using telegram so my chat history will start from there but if you need to go back and find links or a chat or a conversation or something you sent previously you need to go to whatsapp so there's no easy way to recommend making the switch aside from either having a big continue to have a big uproar and outcry to say to tell facebook not to make that switch or not to uh, allow their sharing between whatsapp and facebook or somehow get a lot all the users that and people that you can't chat with to switch to another app of which telegram seems to be the easiest for domestic and international chatting um 
So I don't, while I don't have a solution for it, I want to say that Signal and Telegram are the good alternatives. It's just a matter of which one works best for you if you do decide to make the switch. But as of this recording, there is no easy way to transfer your chats from WhatsApp to another platform. So that's all there is for that. Um, so I just wanted to share my thoughts that if you're going to switch, Signal and Telegram are good. Um, I've been, I was using a, a VPN service called Blockada, B-L-O-C-K-A-D-A for a while to block um, location tracking and um, general tracking um, on my device for a while, notably my Android device. And it's while it's a good app, it does noticeably reduce the speed of my internet connection. So that was kind of a bummer for me for that. So I'm, well, I'm still continuing to test it. So uh, maybe over the coming couple of months to see if it it does that, or maybe there's just a bulk um, sub going on in the background as far as traffic for why it slowed down, then maybe there's that. But um, I kind of want to continue to test to see if that will um, allow some more privacy in the case that WhatsApp does start sending all the that con try to send all that content to Facebook and I and if it if Blockada is able to block some of that stuff from happening. So with that being said or and so with that the situation's ongoing so we'll see how it goes in the coming months if the stance changes or there's a better way to transfer out of WhatsApp or WhatsApp ends up getting split off entirely from Facebook so that sharing is no longer available or um, allowed to happen. So with that being said, let's jump into this month's Android news. So to start it off, um, XDA had a program called XDA Labs where you could upload your APKs or if you're a developer, you could share um, your projects for various Android apps. So that's shut down as of December 31st, 2020. So if you do want to share your APKs, then uh, you'll have to find another place to do it like FDroid or um, APK Mirror or, or a site a place like that. Um, if you're a user of the modded Gcam or modded Google Camera, it now has, supports the Pixel Cinematic Pan and Audio Zoom features on non-Pixel devices. I'm still testing that on my OnePlus 8 Pro, so um, overall it seems to work nicely, but I haven't tested it extensively on more on videos longer than about 30 seconds, but it's a pretty cool feature as far as um, having a more cinematic pan, kind of like a slow motion video of select objects. For those of you who are still into rooting your Android devices, um, TouchWiz Recovery Port 3.5.0 has been releases to su- or released to support devices with an- or that were released running Android 10. Um, I am OnePlus 8 Pro is still not on the list as far as I know, but I'm continuously monitoring that to see uh, when custom ROMs will be able to be installed on my OnePlus 8 Pro um, so I can get rid of some of the stuff that's um, pre-installed like the Facebook services, um, Instagram, and apps like that. For those of you who use Nova Launcher, uh, Nova Launcher 7 Beta is now out for users of the, or for those of you who are in his Discord channel. So, um, it's still in an alpha beta stage, meaning it's not out on the Google Play Store. So, if you're in the Discord group, you can get the APK to test out some of its new features, like being based on Launcher 3 for improved speed and performance, and some new UI elements and visuals, and updates to the settings menu. Um, Skype 8.6.7 was released and it adds support for Android 11's chat bubbles. Um, essentially what that does is if you're in a chat and you want to keep it on your home screen for easy access, you can pop out a bubble so that you can easily um, view the replies and send your own replies from that pop-up menu. Uh, Qualcomm announced a new Snapdragon 480 chip to support 5G on lower end devices which also will support Quick Charge 4 Plus for faster wire charging and HD resolution support at 120 Hz. Um, Twitter got an update via its beta channel to support adding, or, which added support for 4K images, um, which is supported in uploading and viewing in the in the app, so you can get view higher resolution images and share them as well, so other users get better quality images. 
Um, OnePlus has announced that they're in now entering the smartwatch um, market via a new product called the OnePlus Band. It's a 1.1 inch smartwatch with a 100 milliamp hour battery, about a two weeks of um, battery life, three axis acceler- accelerometer, gyroscope, um, oxygen sensor, oxygen sensor, heart rate sensor. And it costs about $34, so about on par with your regular Android smartwatches on the low-end side, so definitely something to keep your eye out for. Uh, next up, Pocket Cast, or the owners behind Pocket Cast have met, and they've decided that they're going to place it up for sale by September of 2021. Um, no real reason that I could tell as far as why they did that. Probably just hard to monitor, maintain, or they didn't have a reason... Um, to continue um, keeping the app going on their um, um, on their servers, and maybe they just didn't have time to keep maintaining the app. So um, we'll see what happens by the end of the year, or, or who buys them out, or if the app gets shut down entirely. Um, for on a personal note, if you are subscribed to the main feed, then you will have seen that recently I reviewed another podcast app called Antenna Pod, which is an open source minimalist uh, podcast client for Android. So if you're looking for an alternative or something that's updated a little bit more regularly and is easy to use, then definitely check that out. Um, it is free. And as I mentioned, it's open source and available for Android. Um, and finally, the Netflix app is getting an update to support new studio level codecs for better um, audio handling. So loudness management will be better maintained and audio quality will be clear regardless of what you're, how you're listening to shows on Netflix, whether it's Bluetooth, your phone speaker, or anything like that. And as far as the big news for this week, uh, or for this month, Samsung announced um, three new devices in the Galaxy S21 line, notably the S21, the S21 Plus, and the S21 Ultra. So they all have 120 hertz displays, starting with ba- and have uh, base models in each line of with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. Um, the S21 and S21 Plus go up to 256 gigabytes of storage. The Ultra goes up to 512 gigabytes of storage. Um, they each have progressively bigger batteries. The low end one has a 4,000 milliamp battery, 4,000 hour milliamp hour battery. Uh, the S21 Plus has a 4,800 milliamp hour battery, and the Ultra has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. They all come with 15 watt wireless charging support. Um, and 12 megapixel primary and secondary cameras. Um, the Ultra has a 108 megapixel primary wide angle camera, which makes it even better. Um, and they all have really good high end telephoto lenses. So they all have very good cameras, but if you go for the Ultra, then it's an even bigger, um, upgrade and support. Um, as far as screen sizes, the S21 has a 6.2 inch screen, the S21 ha- Plus has a 6.7 inch screen, and the S21 Ultra has a 6.8 inch screen. So, um, I mean, it depends on, so basically it comes down to what size device you want. All specs are pretty good for the S21 line. Um, so it comes down to what size, it really comes down to what size screen you have. You're not really missing too much between the S21 and S21 Plus. So if you can afford it, I would say go for the S21 Plus, but you shouldn't really feel shortchanged if you go for the S21. The Ultra is the high-end super duper model. So, um, of course, if you can afford it, but if you do want the biggest and best from the Samsung Galaxy S20 line, the Ultra is the way to go. Um, and then as a bit of side note, there's more integration on the devices with Google services. So if you want um, Google Messages, it's the default messaging app in the international models. But if you want it on your domestic models, then you do have to set it, still set it as a default app. But you also get the Google Discover feed via swiping right, um, kind of like you see on the Pixel devices and the OnePlus default launcher. So... Um, all sorts of, or a couple of different bits of support there, but overall a nice progressive upgrade on the S21 line. So that's all there is for the Android news. So with that, we'll jump right into the Linux news. So to start it off as a bit of an update as far as, um, 
software that I plan to be installing in addition to some of the stuff I covered in the original review is um, some just random software. So notably Audacity for podcast editing and audio file man- audio file editing. So um, it's one of those things that I didn't think about before. Um, Dropbox for file syncing between phone and laptops. I think they look like there is a desktop client for Linux. So I'm hoping that the sync function works there, but if not, at least there's a website, but that's something that I plan to test out. Um, I, I think GIMP is installed with most Linux distros, um, GIMP being the, uh, photo editor that's the open source version of Photoshop. So, um, there is that. Um, and then, um, Finally, NewCash, which is uh, an accounting software for budgeting and tracking your expenses. So, um, just a side thing to start for a project to start on for 2021. Um, as far as other news, um, if you're looking for an Adobe Lightroom alternative, Darktable version 3.4 was released, or notably 3.4.0, with a few random like bug fixes and updates and things like that. If you are a gamer or install Windows apps on Linux, then Wine version 6.0 was updated with Vulkan backend, um, Direct Show support, Media Foundation support, uh, better text console, USB kernel driver support, better mouse support, plug and play device support, or better plug and play device notifications, a WebSocket API, and initial support for Apple Silicon. So um, apps and hardware should work a lot better now. Um, as far as um, um, Linux distros go, if you have a touchscreen laptop and you wanted um, an alternative to Windows, then check out Jing OS. That's J-I-N-G-O-S. It's an iPad-style Linux distribution, so you get a UI that's, that looks like the iPad. Um, it, has, it supports multi-touch, multi-touch gestures. It's compatible with the Surface Pro 6 and the Huawei MateBook 14 at the moment, but keep your eye out on that for support for more devices in the future if you want a simplified layout for your touchscreen laptop. Um, and it will be available as of January 31st, 2021. Um, if you're looking for an open source paint tool, uh, check out Krita 4.4.2. It recently got an update with gradient tools and halftone filters, so better photo editing support there. And finally, KDE Plasma version 5.2.1 is coming on February 16th of 2021. It's the latest version of the KDE Plasma interface, which is going to have a new app drawer, more theme options, new system monitor, and firewall settings. So um, basically, it's going to have a improved layout and more under the hood changes for easier or better visuals and easier support. So with that, um, that's all there is for that. So we'll jump right into this month's Star Wars news. So to start it off, uh, we got an announcement for some new content from Star Wars, a high Republic, notably a no- novel called light of the Jedi, which covers a hyperspace disaster that threatens the Republic and the Jedi beyond what they've known. I have recently finished reading the novel. So I'm working on some notes to review it, but overall a good novel in the, during the time of the High Republic and when and basically prior to the events of the Empire and the Phantom Menace. So everything is very good. It's the height of the Jedi and their power. So they come across a new race that um, threatens their way of thinking. Um, then we also get a novel called The Test of Courage where um, Another hyperspace disaster tests two Jedi's ability on a mysterious jungle moon. I haven't gotten to that yet. And then the great Jedi rescue where a, a hyperspace disaster brings the Jedi into action to save the day. I don't know if those last two are more information on what happens in the events of Light of a Jedi, but that's something to look into. But it, it all takes place during the era of the High Republic. Um, we also get a new comic series called the Star Wars The High Republic. A couple of issues are out, or at least the first issue is out, maybe more. But it, ha- it takes place during the dedication ceremony of the Starlight Beacon, which is where we end the novel for Light of the Jedi. Um, and it talks about how a new Jedi must make her way to help save innocent lives. So another one of those things where it's probably more visuals to help picture what happens in the events of life, 
Light of the Jedi. Um, and finally, moving beyond the High Republic, uh, Lucasfilm's Games was announced as a new um, branch for LucasArts as far as um, bringing all of the Star, War Star Wars games properties under one roof. So basically, everything we know is going to now operate out of one studio. They're still going to outsource the production of the games, but it has to be authorized and approved by LucasArts. So you can follow them on Facebook or Twitter. The Twitter handle is Lucasfilms Games if you want to stay on top of stuff like that. And one of the cool bits of information coming out is that there might be a new open world um, story driven Star Wars games with LucasArts and Ubisoft. So look out for that if that does pan out. Um, but basically, if you want to stay on top of all the different stuff coming out of Lucasfilm games, then check out the Twitter handle for regular updates, um, trailers, pictures, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, but that is actually all for this particular uh, review month's episode of Headphones Neil News. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, anything you want to get included with next month's review, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. If you want to help support the show, get early access to the show notes to provide your own feedback and stuff like that. You can find uh, Headphones Neil News and reviews on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01. And of course, the website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, uh, whether it's on Patreon or buy me a coffee. Um, either one works to help support the show and keep things going. But that's PatelN01.com. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.